Hey guys, a um, bit of an upper crust type video today. We're looking at the uh, Chris Reeve knives Sebenza and the Chris Reeve knives Incozy, the small versions of each. I'm just going to do a comparison. Um, it won't be hard using either of these because neither of them are mine any longer. I've uh, sold my Sebenza uh, to my buddy Luke who has, in the meantime, sent his Incozy up just for video comparison. So uh, this is kind of a handy video if you're on the fence between which one to get, if you're going to cross that Sebenza line, pop the Sebenza cherry or whatever you, you call it. If you're going to spend, you know, 500 American dollars on a knife, a Sebenza is a good good place to do it. And um, if you were wondering what small Sebenza or Incosi or Chris Reeve knife uh, you wanted out of these two, then this might be a handy video for you. So without any more talking, I'll just bring you down to the tabletop and show you both of them next to each other. Alrighty, so these are the aforementioned Chris Reeve knives. So this one here is an Incosi, and I believe this has a um, diamond wood insert, I will just check, natural canvas micata insert on this one here. So this one isn't mine at all, this is um, this is Luke's and uh, this is in pretty much, I think it's, if it's being carried at all it's been carried very lightly, fairly new condition I would say. Um, so there we are, that's the Inkosi opened, like meow. And then this is my small Sebenza, well it is uh, outgoing, my small Sebenza with bog oak wood and um, that is it there. So, I always see these Chris Reeve knives and I think they all look exactly the same. But when you actually have two of them next to each other and in your hand, a fair few differences do come to light, although the design language is, of course, very similar. Let's get into the blades. All right, so looking at the blades, uh, the Incozi has a slightly shorter blade than the Sebenza. They're both about as thick as each other and they're both more or less the same shape. So. From to the naked eye, you're probably not going to notice too much difference until you actually have two knives comparing them. So just taking them onto their spine view, the Inkosi feels like it might be a very small margin thicker. Very small margin indeed. I can't quite catch with the naked eye and I don't have calipers. Um, but just to me, it just feels like a stockier, stumpier blade, which I guess is the aim of this video is just to sort of perhaps give you my feelings on how each of them feel as knives. And I think the Inkosi is kind of a bit more perhaps compact and yeah, it just feels a little bit more durable or something. There's something about it, it's got a bit more of a, I guess the shorter blade with the length makes the tip perhaps a little bit more stout. Um, yeah, just a couple of little, um, lots of similarities, but a few little noticeable differences too. A little hump there uh, after the dual thumb studs, which is also different on the Incozy. Single thumb stud on the Sebenza. So that is some differences between the two blades. The Sebenza small being the longer of the two, and the Incozy being the shorter with two thumb studs. A couple of little details on there as well. Now between these two models, this is a satin finish and this is a sort of a tumbled or sort of stonewash finish blade. Uh, those depend on which type of Sebenza you get, so they are not like not all Sebenzas have this sort of finish. With the Sebenzas, the um, ones with the inlays have polished titanium and more polished finished blades as well, and different coloured uh, hardware too. So that is the blades. They're both very similar but not identical on the blade front. So let's look at the pivots. The pivot difference is obvious. So the Incosi has a new pivot which is huge. In fact the Incosi's whole um, rotation system there where you fold out the blade is a lot more robust than the small Sebenza which is still not weak by any, chan uh, any standards but the Incosi has washers that go right right to the edge. You see them? Just absolutely huge phosphor bronze washers. Um, the Sebenza has really large phosphor bronze, phosphor bronze washers, but they're not that large. They're not as huge as the Inkosi. So the result from this is the Sebenza is a smooth knife, but the Inkosi is a smoother knife. Not a faster knife, but definitely a smoother knife. That pivot action is definitely an improvement on the smoothness of the Sebenza. So it really does roll out there, very glassy, all those adjectives you always hear, all very much true of the Inkosi. So definitely a smoother knife than the small Sebenza, which is still one of the smoothest knives I've ever had. It just has a little bit more um, sort of jerk to it, I guess, as you roll it out. But yeah, the Inkosi is definitely the winner in the smoothness stakes. If that is what you're buying your knife for, solely smoothness, Inkosi is the winner. So looking at the handles, and this is where the most obvious differences start coming to light. So the Inkosi handle 
has much more sculpting and sort of quote unquote ergonomic um, accentuations, which therefore makes it a knife that is going to be limited to certain types of hands for supreme, you know, using all day type comfort. I'm not going to kid anyone and suggest that these knives are going to be routinely used as like pure everyday carry knives by every buyer, but when I use my Sebenza, I did use it a lot, and um, it is, they are really good user knives. So I will sort of cover this because the Nkosi's handle for my hand, these don't line up with me at all. So, um, like, so if I just hold it like this, my hands are on the larger size. I've got sort of longer slender fingers, but my hands fit the large gloves well. So none of the humps line up for me when I grip into the knife. So that is something that really, if, if you're worried about having, um, you know, it not fitting, you're probably gonna wanna hold one of these first, unless you're just planning on collecting it or just using it very occasionally. But me using this all day, I wouldn't enjoy it as much as using this all day, for sure. Um, the inlay is of course um, just different from what you choose from the factory when you or the dealer when you buy it. Uh, the Bog Oak or the Micarta, I mean, either or. They don't make a great deal of difference to the grip. They add a bit of dimension to the um, to the sides, but nothing huge. It really is just a design choice, something of, you know to get in your series of knives to make it a bit different. So, which is totally fine as well. Um, so yes, the handle on the um, Incosi is both smaller, as in shorter as well as being a little bit more particular about how it's held. If it fit your hand perfectly, it probably would be supremely comfortable. However, it just doesn't quite fit mine perfectly. So um, I must um, must certainly bring that up. It's definitely more of a particular um, particular arrangement there of, of you know, humps and whatnot, whereas this is just a very smooth, basic, sort of straight handle that still probably not huge hand friendly, but it is large enough hand friendly for me to be able to fit my full four fingers on it with no worries at all. Um, so the clips turning over, the lock sides, you know, not too many differences. Um, both have just the standard Reeve Integral lock. Um, no, um, no, what are they called? Um, over travel stops or anything like that. It is just a, just a frame lock, as you would suggest. So there is actually there is a stop in these. Yeah, I think the, actually the clip sort of works as a stop and. Yeah, the detent ball I think works as a stop as well on the Incosi, whereas on the Sebenza, now there is no stop on the Sebenza apart from a bit of pressure from the clip. So that's, I guess, a bit of an advance as well. Because, you know, the Incosi was, I think, originally going to be the Sebenza 25, and then they just renamed it the Incosi, I think, when people were like, oh, it's not quite a Sebenza, it's actually different enough. So don't know the full law behind it, but that is what I understand. Both of them have the sort of um, swivel pivot, which I'm not the biggest fan of, because when you take the lanyard out, uh, it jiggles a bit. Um, if you keep the lanyard in, you won't have a problem, but I wasn't the biggest fan of the lanyard on this one because it kept loosening and the blade kept nicking it on the end. So uh, I took the lanyard out and um, I don't use lanyards at all on knives anyway. Uh, this one has a bit less hardware in it, this uh, small Nkosi. It's um, got one hole on one side, on the scale side. This is like the guide hole for them using their sort of high tolerance machines. Um, this Sebenza has it on both. Uh, and the Sebenza has sort of the extra couple of screws. You, I'll just, you can just see them, can't you? So Nkosi, one, two, three, holding it together. Sebenza, one, two, three, four, holding it together. That's just it. That's that's the that's the difference. That's the joke sort of thing. To quote Rainier Wolfcastle. So yeah, um, I know this is a bit of more of a rambly sort of tabletop video. Not usually what I do, but I figure I'm not sure how many videos there are like this comparing these two small knives. So I thought it just might be handy if you are choosing between the two of them just to make up your your mind. They're both about the same price. They're both you know lots of different options and variations, um, but these are the two sort of. You know, the general shapes and everything are the same. Inlays will change, finishes will change, but really, uh, that's what you get. So the Incosi is a much smaller knife. One thing I did notice about the Incosi is the tang protrudes a little bit more, so if you are keen, you can actually use it as a bit of a front flipper if you are, you know, that way inclined, whereas the Sebenza's just isn't quite there and there's just not enough leverage available for you to be able to do that. Your thumb just slides right off. So overall, for me, myself, if I was to buy a high-end knife again, I would still buy the Sebenza, maybe even a large Sebenza. Um, I think if I could do it all again, probably a large. Um, my hands, I think if I carried a large, I'd use it a lot more. My hands just always found this a little bit small, not too small, but just not enough that I'd pick it over, say, my Benchmade 940 or something like that. 
So just for that, um, I'll just do a couple of comparisons to other knives. So let's zoom that out a little bit and line these up by the pivots. So this is a Benchmade 940 compared to the, uh, the two Chris Reeve knives. Uh, this is a Cold Steel American Lawman. Just there. Sort of a much bigger knife. And um, another super high class knife. This is the this is the Batman knife. Um, just um, just to sort of swing with its um, you know, contemporaries. This as well. So. They're both small knives, small pure EDC knives I'd suggest. Most likely going to be collector pieces rather than actual users, but absolutely nothing wrong with them being actual users as well. And my reason for selling this to Benzo was, well, I knew Luke was, he'd asked if he wanted it, if I wanted to sell it a couple of times, and I'm just at that point where my channel, I want a couple of extra things to look at and review, wasn't carrying it enough to justify having the knife versus the potential money. So I've put, I've put a nice um, Tormek edge back on it, so it's, all ready to back, to, all ready to go. As almost, uh, I feel a pretty new knife. Um, yeah, so, so I've just sold it for the Australian equivalent of the American price. So I bought it for 450 US. I've sold it for 450 Australian because it has been carried and it's still got the box and everything. But it's kind of what I thought was a fair price. Um, so my Bogo Xabenza is going now. Um, that is it next to my mate Luke's um, my Carter Inkosi Small. Uh, I hope this video has been of some help. Just to compare these to really high-end blades because it's the sort of thing you're spending that much money on. And I know these blades have good warranties and if you get them from a good dealer, you can send them back, but I just thought it would be useful to see both of them side by side. So there we go. Oh, um, both of them have S35. I just figured these things weren't <laughs> needing to be covered, but both of them have the S35 VN steel as well. They haven't done anything different with the steels or anything like that. M more or less, the materials are exactly the same, just arranged differently. Anyway, all right, that's it. Uh, sorry about the rambling nature of the review. Uh, I don't often compare super high-end knives, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's probably the most of it you'll get from me for a little while now. All right, see you guys.